Lawmakers calling out the Hunter Biden plea deal as a slap on the wrist. His lawyers say the five-year investigation is over as lawmakers in both chambers say this is only the beginning of their investigation into corruption claims and a government cover-up. Joining us right now, Harvard Law professor and best-selling author Alan Dershowitz. Good morning to you, Alan. Great to see you as always. Let's just talk about this at the top here. What do you make of this plea deal to avoid jail time? Would any other Oops. American have been given this same option? No, um, I predicted exactly in my book, Get Trump, um, uh, which I uh, recently published, that this would happen. And in, in my appearances on television, that the Justice Department would indict Hunter Biden in order to create the oppression of, of equal justice. Now, if that's all he did, failed to pay his taxes on time, uh, then actually it was... Uh, it was harsher than usual. Most people who are delayed in paying their taxes, if they pay them, uh, don't get their cases treated criminally or as a misdemeanor at all. The other charge, the charge involving failure to indicate uh, cocaine addiction on an application for a gun, that may be undercharged. I mean, that's a serious crime. We don't want people going around with guns who are addicted to cocaine. So I think on balance, probably if that's all he's guilty of, the uh, plea deal is fair. On the other hand, I think the American public has a right to know what happened to Burisma, what happened to the laptop, what happened to those alleged 17 tape recordings, and that's probably going to be investigated by Congress. Now, if his lawyer is correct that the investigation is completed, then he really can't plead the Fifth Amendment, and he's going to have to answer questions about his own involvement and the allegations about his father's involvement. So I suspect we're gonna see a continuation of the investigation uh, by Congress. So how do you think this plea will play into the bribery allegations against his father? Nothing, I don't think it has any relationship at all. I think the plea is a plea to three rather technical offenses that don't relate to anything that his father uh, was accused of doing. I think we have to hear what's on those tapes. We hear there are 17 of them, two of them involve recordings of conversations with the President of the United States. I not, don't necessarily believe that or believe there's anything incriminating, but I'd like to hear it. Nothing should be kept secret from the American uh, uh, public. That's why I want, for example, Trump's trial to be on television. I want every American to be able to see it. And I want every American to be able to hear what's on those tapes, what's on the laptop, and um, what is on other allegations that have been made. Uh, these, uh, this plea bargain only resolves uh, what appears to be the tip of an iceberg. Now, there may not be any iceberg there. Maybe they've done a thorough investigation, and that's why probably there should be a report to Garland, which Garland can make public by the special prosecutor investigator, uh, to see what investigation they did of these three other things that seem far, far more serious and more important than the three things to which the deal, the plea deal was attached. Either way, though, you say this could also mean, though, that Hunter Biden will be compelled to testify before Congress and lose the right to invoke his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. His attorneys say the case is closed, it's been resolved. So then why is the U.S. Attorney's Office saying this case is ongoing? Well, I think both sides want to create a narrative, one that we're, you know, the Justice Department, we're busy, we're, we're looking into everything, and the other side wants to say it's all done, it's clear. But I think you take a risk when you say the case is over, you take a risk that a judge might say, well, then you can't invoke your privilege against self-incrimination if you're uh, asked to testify in front of Congress. So it, it's a two-edged sword. I think this is the beginning, not the end, but clearly the intent was to create the impression that there's equal justice. But uh, if, in fact, there is no thorough investigation of the more serious charges, obviously there was that in the in the Donald Trump case, there was a serious investigation of the more serious charges resulting in an indictment, then you can't say equal justice. So we have to reserve judgment as to whether there's been equal justice. And let's talk about the significance of the timing. Why now? Why did he take the plea deal now? because that's what the Justice Department wanted. I predicted that uh, because they want to create the impression. I predicted it would be within two weeks or four weeks of uh, the plea of the uh, indictment against Donald Trump that there'd be an indictment against Hunter Biden. And it happened two or three weeks 
uh, later. That That's not a coincidence, particularly after how many years of investigation? Why now? Well, now, because the media is saying, the media on the left is saying, well, this shows equal justice. The media on the right is saying, no, it's just a slap on the wrist. These are all Rorschach tests, and, and, and people say what their own partisan narrative forces them to say. Um, I try to be down the middle. I'm a liberal Democrat who voted uh, for the Biden, who, for President Biden, but I want to see equal justice done to everybody, and I don't want to see the criminal justice system weaponized against anybody for partisan political purposes. We have to follow the evidence, not the political narrative. Speaking of which, again, the GOP saying this only accelerates their own investigation. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill say this is going to uh, accelerate that, their investigation into government corruption and to cover up. So what's next? What can we expect? Well, I think we'll hear uh, from the House committees. We're going to see subpoenas issued. Uh, there's no way that Hunter Biden can resist the subpoena. He may still say, well, Fifth Amendment, who knows? The Justice Department is still investigating. I have the Fifth Amendment right. But now they can give him immunity also, because if they're not interested in going after him for any more crimes, give him immunity. And then if you give him immunity, he has to testify. So uh, I, I do think that uh, there's going to be more testimony, and the testimony will have to come from Hunter Biden himself. And we're going to have to see what's on that laptop. And the key point is the 17 recordings, apparently, what, 15 of them of Hunter Biden and two of them of President Biden. Let's see, A, do they exist? B, are they incriminating? C, are they exculpatory? D, are they neutral? We have a right to know, and I think we ought to know that. And if the special report doesn't release it, then Congress, under its power to oversee the actions of the executive, have a perfect right to uh, listen to those tapes, and if there's no confidential material on them, to release them to the public. Alan Dershowitz, always a pleasure talking to you, sir. Thanks for My joining pleasure. us. pleasure. Thank you.